Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk about the importance of good constructive criticism in the community. And uh, this is one because what ended up happening with, uh, I want to talk about Zorin OS again. And uh, this will probably be the last Zorin OS video for a little while because we've done a lot. Because what ended up happening is a few months back, a release came out and it was spotted in their privacy policy that they're actually were collecting data that was not listed anywhere else in the installation, anywhere else in the in the operating system itself. So it was literally only on their website, which you did not have to agree to any EULAs to install the application uh, or the operating system. And so I brought some light to this pretty early on and the Zorin team responded back giving some information and some more detail about how this program worked. And so I created another video looking at what is being collected, how it's being collected, looking at the program, which is all of just a few lines in a cron job. The challenge was is that that was being collected without anybody really knowing about it. And some people who were watching the internet connections were noticing every hour Zorn would be sending some information back somewhere. And uh, what ended up happening is I did a video about that. And then when the release of the Zorn light came out just a couple weeks ago, I did another video pointing back to that. Uh, the, the story about the data collection ended up being covered by its FOSS and also QuidSub looked at it. And in response to a number of us raising this issue, guess what? Zorin just released 15.1 on each of the operating systems, their, their core and their light. And now their installer has the opt out for the Zorin census. Now we talked in the video about you can uninstall, you can get rid of it by uninstalling the Zorin OS census application package. You can see what's going on there and you should probably also go in there and remove the cron job so it's not trying to run on a file that's not there. But what I wanted to mention here is that it is so awesome to see a distribution listening to some of the the criticism of the OS in actually making positive changes. So in light of the It's Foss article, which was probably had a wider reach than my video might have, Quid Sub's video, my video, we raised enough awareness of the Zorin OS census and said, hey, it's not good that this is doing this without letting people know. So now when you boot up the new Zorin and you go into install it, the first thing it's gonna give you is on the initial setup screen, uh, they've added another option where you can install the codex, you can install, there's something else there, and then they added another one for opt out of the Zorin census. It's opt out, it's not opt in, but hey, I'll take any victory we can get. That's just fine. So what the opt out now looks like is they have a link to the privacy policy, so you can actually go to the privacy policy and read about the OS census, and you have the ability to check the box to not participate in the Zorin OS census at all. These are excellent things. Zorin has indeed done the work that I really looked at and said, these are the little reasons I wasn't recommending Zorin, such that I think this year in my upcoming video on recommended Linux distributions for 2020, I think I'm actually gonna put Zorin on that list this year because it still is a very nice to use system. They've gotten rid of the Wine pre-installed by default, at least on the, on the, uh, the free version. Not sure if it's on the Ultimate or not. They've listened to feedback. They've put the information out there. They've actually done the work, but uh, they've removed the ability to do the OS census from the installer and made it aware it is there. And that is an awesome victory. And I wanted to go from this into constructive criticism and positive criticism is actually a great thing. Sometimes we just don't want to listen to criticism. Sometimes our criticism is not necessarily merited. Sometimes it is. It, you kind of got to use a little bit, but I want to give you a few tips about providing some constructive criticism. And, and hopefully I can remember these myself as well, uh, because I can get in there and sometimes not praise something as not uh, as much as, as be critical of it, which at least to a degree, I can say a lot of people like my channel because I'm not playing political games. 
I'm not just kissing people's butts. I'm actually giving you my ideas. Even my absolute favorite Linux distribution, Linux Mint, has some things that do drive me crazy, and I will talk about even those on videos about that, which is good. And uh, nothing there is is enough that I wouldn't use it. It's just a little couple little peccadillos that uh, drive me a little bit nuts, but I can work around them. Why not, you know? But uh, when you're going to give some constructive criticism, you want to be as polite about it as you can. You want to highlight and feature as much positive as you can. And I've been trying to do that a lot more. Obviously, in the earlier days of my channel, I haven't been quite as good at the positive part of it. But you become polished over the years and start doing a little bit better job of trying to find the balances, trying to find the positives and the negatives. And really the purpose here is refinement, refining it. The other OS I'm really thinking of that has done this really well is Farron OS. Because Farron also, if you saw the first couple videos that I had before, you know, Farron would follow a lot of my channel, I was kind of critical of several of the things. And some of those recommendations I, I made were put in there and some of them were not which is very valid. You know, it's his project. He can do with it what he wants. But a lot of the minor things that I think a lot of other people said, man, the thing's bright, it's bright as the sun. And so calming down the colors a little bit, uh, removing wine from default was an excellent thing. And the reason I like removing wine by default is not everybody needs it. And it's an application that if you don't need it, it should not be on your computer because it will allow Windows Windows executables to run. And if you are unaware of that, you could potentially run a Windows virus on Linux if Wine is installed. <laughs> so you want to only have that. Now, I love the option. I'm not sure if it's still in Farron, but he had at one point in time an installer. Hey, this will allow some Windows programs to work. Would you like to attempt to install this? Great. That's an awesome feature. Um, but the it's listening to some of these responses, and usually it's the smaller distributions give you the mo the most uh, feedback. So I think one of my the bigger channels on uh, bigger videos on this channel is the Xturn OS video. And uh, if you go and look at that video, the pinned comment on that is a, a big thank you from the developer it, showing that, yeah, some of the things that I criticize were rightly criticized. He just couldn't figure out how to get something to work. Some of it was like, oh, yeah, maybe I should do a little bit different. And I'm not sure if there's any other progress updates to the project over there or not. But you get these types of positive feedback and you get the recommendations and you honestly take them to heart, it's a good thing to do. Now, how do you not have your recommendation taken to heart? Well, you'd be a jerk about it. Or you come on and, hey, you should do this. Hey, you should do that. And usually when I get comments like that, I usually just delete them. If you're nice about it, if you, know, if you provide a little bit of reason, I'm a little bit more inclined to listen to it, but like all of us, you know, all of us don't like necessarily receiving criticism, although in reality, I do welcome it when it's done in the right spirit. Uh, particularly, I write a lot, and, and as an author, I want to hear good constructive criticism before the book is actually in print. That's an important thing, and it's an important thing as we're working on projects, as we're, we're doing videos, we're building a channel, listening to the recommendations of the, of the channel is certainly a good and valid thing. And I would hope that we would all do that. Sometimes we have the capabilities, sometimes we don't. Sometimes a recommendation just goes against our philosophy. Uh, you know, I'm not about to just start throwing affiliate links for anything and everything I can find under the sun because I only want to promote things that I feel confident about. This is why I haven't been promoting the VPNs as heavily lately because I'm not sure I have confidence in either Nord or in private internet access right now. I did just apply to the affiliate program for another one, which is a very trusted VPN as well. When I hear back from them, uh, you'll get the update on that. So maybe that's coming on down the line. But the fact of the matter is if you do have some positive criticisms and critiques, uh, hey, I welcome those. You just got to do them in the right possible way. Like I got one guy that watches a lot of my videos. I don't know why. He sends me regular hate mail and I keep blocking his stuff. You know who you are. Um, 
and he's flat out rude swearing at me in emails. Like, what do you think's going to happen? Yeah, I'm going to keep blocking you. And if they keep on becoming vile, I'm just going to hand them over to the police after a while. I mean, in all honesty. So it's like, you got to be a little bit nicer when you approach things, you know? That's the, but I mean, if really, if you read these emails, it, it kind of makes me laugh, except there's people that actually think this way in their life. It's kind of funny. But anyway, um, that's kind of what I wanted to say. Just, just criticism and just a, a big thanks to Zoran OS for listening to this legitimate criticism and doing something about it. Did they completely remove it? No, but they told us about it and they gave us a, an opt-out option and I am happy with that. That is an awesome victory. Also want to shout out uh, Pizza Loving Nerd sent me, uh, was the first person to send me the uh, the information that Zoran had made this change. So if you haven't checked out Pizza Loving Nerd's channel, go check him out over there as well. He does some Linux content and I believe some other gaming and some other content as well. Um, you'll check out his channel over there. So anyway, thanks for coming along on this little short video. Uh, have a look at that Zorin OS 15.1. Have a look at the option there that you can opt out of census and it actually has the information now. So kudos to you Zorin. And I did want to do this video to shout out to Zorin because I know we have had some communication about this. And in all honesty, it is great the step that they took. They were able to keep what they wanted, but alert people that it's there now. So that's a great victory. So thanks for coming along. Let me know your comments down below.